Hi, this is Richard. We're doing a quick tip about the camera. As you can see, I'm in camera mode by hitting zero on the number pad. I have my camera here and a little quick scene set up. So this guy here is your camera. This direction is pointing up and you can just grab it like you would anything else. Whoops. If I grab it correctly. All right, let's just hit G. You can grab it and move it around just like anything else. And you can scale it so that it's more or less visible if it's getting in the way of your scene. You can hit H to hide it, Alt H to show it again. But then one thing I want to point out uh, before we get into the cool stuff is you click on it and this button pops up, this camera button. Over here, if I click on my object, well, I get some more options than I have with a camera, but I can click on camera up here, I can click it here. And I get this camera button. So all of our camera options are going to be under under that camera button. If you want to go into your camera from wherever you are and see what it's looking at, hit zero on the number pad. Now I'm in my camera. Let's click on camera and I'm on my camera button on my properties view. So we have perspective, orthographic, and panoramic. Uh, most of your renders will probably be in perspective because it's going to look realistic, but if you have something like an isometric game that maybe you're working on or something technical like an engine, you might want to put it in orthographic so that things at the back are scaled equally to things at the front. You just have one uh, point of perspective and everything looks pretty good. Now, see, I just moved my mouse and I got out of it. So one thing that I like having is I just hit in to go into my properties shelf. Down here under view, I like lock camera to view. Just like that. And now you see this red box around here. My friend actually showed me this. Uh, and now as I rotate the camera around in camera, uh, rotate my view around in camera mode, the camera moves with me. I don't pop out of it. But if you don't have that on, remember we went under view, lock the camera. If you don't have that on, then you can hit shift F to fly the camera around and right mouse button just moves it around. Right click takes you out of it. Shift F and you can use the WASD keys like you're in a video game. But let's get out of that. I like just having it locked. That way I don't have to worry about remembering anything else. I just move everything around like uh, I'm modeling something. So then you can change the scale of your uh, orthographic view and then this is just where your camera's located and your clipping see that moving in and out that's how close and far away the clipping is change it to perspective and you still have those options but now focal length this is more like an actual camera the focal length um, just changes how sharp that perspective is. See, things are looking pretty flat. The focal length isn't giving you very much depth. Um, this is like using different lenses. You can also change the focus le length on some lenses, but you would do that there with that focal length option. And then you can change it field of view by degrees. You're probably used to this with a video game. Adding in more degrees gives you way more depth, almost fisheye. It's going to really distort things, but you'll have a lot more depth. And then Turning it way down is going to make things look a lot flatter. You're going to have a lot less depth. So let's just leave that there. And then camera presets, the sensor. That's how much is going to be inside of it. You just leave that to auto. And we're going to look at some of this on display. We're going to stay in camera mode. You can have multiple cameras doing different things, uh, especially for animations. You'd want to do this. If you're switching between different cuts and takes, you'll have different cameras and then you want to name them and it'll put the name right here so you know what camera you're currently looking at. You can have the sensor area that we were changing up here shown here. Safe areas. This is for if you're going to be putting something on television. These safe areas are going to show you what's going to be clipped off by the bevel of the television. So you don't want anything important to go in this area if it's a high def TV. You would want like titles and things to start in here, give ample room uh, don't go inside the safe area. Even though it is part of your image, uh, it might be shifted this way by that whole safe area. And then you'll see all of this side and you won't see this corner. Or it might be shifted that way. That's why safe area is there, just to help you set it up. And then mist if you have that and limits. Composition guides, this is interesting. You can have 
thirds. Every good photograph thinks about thirds. You want to have something of interest in each third. Like, see, this is a better composed photograph. Now, if I just move this over to cross this third line, and I have negative space over here on this third. You want to have an equal amount of negative and interest space. So if I zoom this out, I could put this right there. And that's a better composed image than it was with everything just centered. And then you can also have center, center diagonal, just all these different things that are going to help you line up your photographs in different ways, or your renders in different ways. Uh, golden triangle guides. You'd have to do a little bit more research into golden triangle. It's actually a mathematical um, principle based on the Pythagorean theorem um, that's seen often in nature. So you can line things up with that harmonious triangle. Just different things. You would want to research those. Uh, basically, you can just leave thirds on and use the tips that I told you. Put something on this one, negative space on that one. You're good to go however you want. If you want it really busy, fill in three of those. Uh, very bleak with uh, only one thing to look at, put it on one of them. It's just going to change um, the dynamic of your photograph and make it much more artistic if you just follow the rule of thirds. And then Passpart 2. This is the Passpart 2. It is the shaded area, and they actually have these on some cameras, but this area is what's going to render. This is your shaded area, and that's the Passpart 2. And you can change how dark or light it is with this alpha. And you can even turn it off. And then size, well, it doesn't look like it does anything if we get out of camera mode. It's basically just scaling it up. It's not going to change anything with your renders. It's just making it more or less visible in your 3D view. Because sometimes you'll get really close to something, and then when you try to model, you don't want to hide your camera, but it's really big, and it's obstructing your view of everything you're trying to model. Custom properties if you want them. And then depth of field. This is where it gets kind of interesting. Let's focus on our cube. And then this radius is how much or how little. And if you have a camera and you know cameras, you can use f-stop. Um, I would personally prefer f-stop, but for everybody just getting into this, just use radius and just turn this up a little bit and then do a test render. I added some materials to make it more interesting to look at. Now you can see going off towards the horizon, everything's out of focus and the cube is in focus. If we put this at just 0.01, let's take a look at how it's different. Everything back here is in much better focus. You can hardly even notice anything. Let's put it at 0.5, and some of the box will probably be blurry. Yep. See now, just like this corner is in focus. That's a really high uh, amount. 0.25. And that's really easy, really simple, how you do depth of field. And then blades. If you have multiple light sources and they're bouncing light everywhere, um, you can, in uh, compositing mode, you can uh, put in bokeh or lens flare or things like that that are going to uh, be shaped by the number of blades. And like if you see a star at night uh, in, a pic in a picture, let me pull up a picture real quick. Here you've got these stars, and you see these four streaks this way and this way. That's actually because there was something obscuring this view very close to the capturing lens. And it's a little cross that goes over the telescope that holds the mirror to bounce the light. And it's held on with four legs going from that mirror. And that's why you get that effect of this little starburst effect. If there were six legs, you'd see six of these. So Bokeh is kind of the same thing because uh, cameras have uh, blades of a shutter and that's not the right way to... They have an aperture that closes in a ring and there's a number of blades on that and as it closes it takes the picture uh, it focuses the light through the lens a certain amount so that's also has to do with the f-stop I don't want to get too technical with it, but it's going to change the shape of your bokeh. And then you can rotate that a little bit, however you want.
Now it's not really going to show up in mine since I'm not doing anything in compositing mode. But real quick and dirty, that's how you do depth of focus. You just pick what you want to focus on and then change your radius. 0 0.2, 0 0.25 looks pretty good. Let's try 0.15. Because things in the background are of less interest, why not blur them out or make it more artistic? There we go. That We've got that in thirds. All that's blurry. You focus on this. Now it looks nice. <laughs> So that's just a quick tip on a few different things with the camera, how to do depth of focus, uh, what the Passport 2 is, how to lock the view, and really start working with that camera a little bit more uh, than you have been. Real quick before we finish up, let's change this to orthographic so you can see the difference. Now the background is not receding at all. It almost looks like a toy. This is like you zoomed in on a toy from really far away, like a telephoto lens. All right, so that's basically it. If you want to learn a lot more about how to use f-stop and how to um, use the f-stop and things like that, you can set up these settings much like your camera um, and do a lot with this. But those are just some quick tips. You might want to look at some photography websites for a few different things about it. But now you should be able to make much better renders by uh, messing with your camera. So I hope that helped.